Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a prototype to show you. My buddy over at Stasa23 decided to design a knife, and he came to me, of all people. He came to me and said, I would like to work with you guys at Devo Knives. And I was like, damn, that's cool. Uh, we would love to work with you. We want to start doing collaborations like that. Um, I would love to have a series of knives. Um, I was trying to think of a cool name for it and everything, like Barstool series. But my buddy Backpack B said there's a whole thing called Barstool. Um, I have heard of it. I think it's like a podcast or something. Um, but this wouldn't be related to that. So I don't think it would matter. But it sounds cool. Barstool, we do everything alcohol related. Um, so I thought Barstool series would be cool. And then we could have designs with community members that was the idea um and sauce is the first one that we worked with and um he gave us a sketch um he gave me a sketch and i thought it was really sweet and colin got to cracking on it and he you know just mocked it up as a real legitimate knife that functions and everything and then we all went back and forth changing things updating things um and Colin added this really cool pivot design here. And then we were trying to figure out how can we do a reversible clip on this, but not screw up the lines because just putting, you know, two holes here, um, you know, we thought a lot of people wouldn't like that. Um, and so I thought of this idea to do two backspacers. So we ended up doing it and it's a wraparound backspacer right and then you have your clip that goes into the backspacer so those two screws are in the backspacer there right so what we did was we had them make left-handed backspacers so what you do i don't actually have a backspacer here because i sent them we only got two uh with the prototypes and I sent one to Colin to test and one to Stasa. I should have just kept one to test, but uh, I really wanted those guys to get their hands on these. Um, but I really like this knife. It's called the Fireball. If you guys know Stasa, um, you know that he was in a terrible uh, accident where he essentially got blown up. So we thought Fireball would be a great name for this knife, considering, again, we do everything alcohol-related. It just made sense. But yeah, the idea here is you take your uh, clip screws, okay, two T8s, and there's some, there's some stuff we want to change. I think we're going to do a second round of prototypes to get it perfect, just because we're doing something different with this backspacer, we want it to be perfect. And right now, it's not perfectly flush. You can see this side sticks up a little bit. This side's pretty good, and if you tighten this, it kind of messes with everything. So we're going to try to dial that in. And then we want the clip to actually, like, seat into the backspacer so that it's a little more stable because you can give it, like, the slightest wiggle. But basically what we did was we had them tap the scales underneath for lefty, right? So it's tapped on both sides. Let's see if I can get this off for you. So here's the backspacer, right? And then you would have a separate backspacer that's left-handed. So the lefty ones have the, the clip screws here and the body screw here. And then this would be blank, right? So let's say you flip the clip over, right? What happens is now the clip ends up over here. And now this side has just that screw right you can see the screw head but essentially you only have the pivot design on that side like obviously we can't make it perfect where this this is over here but at least you can carry it lefty and everything else would be clean and that's the idea so under here you can see it's tapped on both sides okay and then you have the hole here for the body screw on both sides and it just depends on which side you're on that you actually tighten it down that's where we need to make a little adjustment because we need it to really lock down on both sides or 
maybe use a post or a pin or I don't know. We're going to figure it out. Uh, but technically, it's a fully functioning knife under here, right? You have standoffs and you have body screws. So you could take that backspacer off and still have fully functional knife. I don't know why you would do that, but technically somebody could make aftermarket stuff that, you know, maybe is a little different shaped or, you know, if somebody wanted a lanyard post or something, um, you know, you might be able to figure that out or I don't know. But anyway, then it just slots back on like this, right? Um, you take your body screw here. And you tighten that down. And you'll see as I tighten it. I want to make sure it's not across the writing. There we go. As I tighten it, this side will start raising up. So if I back it out, this side will flush out a little bit. Might be hard for you to tell, but. So we need to dial that in a little bit more. But yeah, you just flip it over and then you put your clip on the other side. And again, we want to add a, um, a slot for the clip so that it, um, locks into place a little bit better this is why we do prototyping it's very important to us that stage of things um it's really you really don't want to make a knife without prototyping it in my opinion it's just a recipe for disaster you know we might do versions of a knife without prototyping um like we did the nip prototypes in titanium and then we did carbon fiber on production run um you know but we knew the model was working you know um, but even that's a risk you know uh, it wasn't a pre-order so we felt comfortable with it but um anyway we want to dial that in and then we want to figure out the uh, versions we want um this one i think we definitely want this is electric blue camo carbon and then all black everything um, black wash on the blade and then we had one with a uh, blood red camo carbon and they kind of screwed up they were supposed to have matching everything and they put a black backspacer on it and then it had like satin accents um, but I think what we would do is just do this just do all black on that red one and then do a satin blade um, I think that would tie it in nicely. And then we're going to flatten this out. So right now it's comfortable to hold, but if this was flat, it would be really comfortable to choke up on it. And so that's what we're going to do with that. The hollow grind feels great. Nice, thin, slicey. The action is, I mean, the detents are incredible. Drop shutty, thumb flicks great. I mean, I couldn't ask for more on the action. Um, lock bar access feels really good. I mean, we could maybe add a touch, but I don't think it's like needed or anything. Um, I think it's a great looking model. I think it's a great design from Stasa. Um, we're really excited to be working with him. And I wanted to show it off because Stasa did show it off. And I wanted him to be the first one to uh show it so when i got the prototypes i just sent him two one of each i sent one to colin in the red and i kept this one um uh, and then i just waited i wanted to tell you guys sooner but i just waited till nick got them and showed you because i know what that feels like uh to have your first design come in and everything and um uh, stasa is an absolutely wonderful human being and um he you know I just thought he deserved to have that moment. Um, but yeah, I'm really digging it. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Any feedback you think would help with the backspacer situation, um, you know, would obviously be uh, welcome. Um, any ideas would be cool. I think we were talking about adding some micro milling to the backspacer. Somebody recommended that on his video, and I think that would be cool. Um, I don't know if it would be cool. I've seen some companies do the thing on the back of the backspacer where it's like, 
it'd be like Devo and Stasa. Like, that would be kind of cool, but we also don't like marking stuff up. Um, but yeah, maybe we could do something with the backspacer to just make it a little more seamless. It does seem a little bit, it kind of looks fat. It's not a fat knife at all, really. Um, I should measure it, but I know that we asked for it to be under half an inch, so it should be, yeah, 0. 0.495. They just got under it. Um, yeah, it's like right at half an inch back there. So it's not, it doesn't feel thick to me. It feels comfortable, honestly. It feels like a good size. Um, yeah, and then you have, for blade length, you have... We usually go 3.3, .3, but I think we went a little bit shorter on this one. I think it's right at 3 inches, maybe just over 3 to there. And then you have, from there to the tail, you have 4 and a quarter. So you're looking at like seven and a quarter overall. Really good size knife, uh, I think. So I can compare it real quick. Here's the uh, Premium Pony. These should be relatively close. That's 2.9. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just slightly longer than that. And then the full size Stout going to be between these two there you go so it's sort of a middle offering which is great we don't have anything in that size yet right um, so yeah let us know what you think a uh, big shout out to stasa i'm really happy for him to have him uh getting his first design out there into the world and I'm, uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. Thankful that he hit me up about it. And uh, hope you guys are into it and support Stasa, support us. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.